Good morning, church. Folks are filing in, and so we are excited to welcome everyone to Resurrection Lutheran Church on site and online on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And we are honored that you are worshiping with us from wherever you are, whether you're right here in our sanctuary, in your home, in another state, or even country. Now we have a special message for those who are joining us online. During this worship service, we celebrate synchronous communion. And this is a time to share communion with the Resurrection Lutheran Church community of faith as you worship in your home or wherever you may be. Now to participate more fully in our online worship service, you may wish to gather a few items as we begin, including bread or crackers, wine and juice, and the bulletin can be downloaded from our Facebook page. So whether you're joining us online or whether you're here on site, we invite you to use the Facebook chat to share your prayer requests before the end of the sermon and we'll add them to our prayers later in the worship service. And of course, as always, for those of you who are in our sanctuary, we invite you to use your handheld device devices, share, check in, share the peace, and chat with those online. And as always, be sure to share this service on your Facebook page. I appreciate all those who have liked us and followed us to be notified of special events and worship opportunities. Resurrection is a faith community reflecting the love of Christ through reaching out to each other, loving God through our worship and praise, and caring for all of God's children and creation. Resurrection Lutheran Church is located on the original and ancestral homelands of the Manahoic people, and we give thanks for their presence here since time immemorial. And we wish to recognize and honor all our indigenous siblings who have and continue to call this land their home. Wednesday morning uh, women's Bible study continues with their books, Sitting at the Feet of Jesus, Rabbi Jesus, and they meet on Wednesdays on site or online, uh, Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. School dressing days are coming up. We have one more week uh, to collect all the things that we need, uh, including a thousand tubes of toothpaste and a thousand uh, pairs of socks. Now, school dressing days is sponsored by the Interfaith Community Council, of which RLC is um, a member. And so we have set a goal of a 1,000 of each socks and tooth, tubes of toothpaste, full-size tubes of toothpaste. And we need to have those here by next Sunday, June 23rd. And there are a number of ways that you can uh, participate. You get to participate in this exciting ministry. Don't pl bring your donations right here to the RLC campus. Or if you'd like, you can have them shipped directly from your uh, favorite retailer. So whether you choose to give monetarily so that we can do the shopping for you, or if you're having items shipped here, be sure to market Sock Drive. Our first international potluck featuring a different country is this coming Friday, June 24th. First, and our focus country is Spain. And so bring a dish from that country. The doors will open at 5.30 p.m. Dinner is at 6. Bring a game and bring a family. Bring, bring, bring. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Bring a game, bring a family, okay, or friend, um, and for this fun-filled uh, evening. The RLC Mission Endowment applications are now now open each year our endowment fund uh, gives monies to worthwhile projects uh, one RLC ministry one group or organization from the local community and at least one area of need based on input from the ELCA in Chicago funds received must be spent by the end of calendar year 2024 applications are due again next Sunday and they're available on site and online Information about all activities is included in the RLC weekly update posted on our website, resurrectionpeople.org, and on our Facebook page. Leading us today in worship is, is David Norquist, lector, Patty Dunn, music director, and the Praise Ensemble. Our video production team today is Robert Schul on camera, A.J. Beck on sound, and David Norquist running our visuals. I am Reverend Heidi Moore, honored to be pastor here at RLC. I invite you to stand as you feel called or able as we begin worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, join us for the call to worship God we gather as your people.
Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It's hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God in Jesus, the manna from heaven, we are fed and nourished by Jesus, the worker of miracles. There is always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, we are shown God's mercy. We are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. At this time, I invite you to share the peace as you feel comfortable or able. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. morning joining us online checked in as we have come back online we give a special welcome to david and doris howe and sue pickard a good morning and she promises she'll be back soon she's been out sick so we're going to hold you in prayer this morning as well and so please uh, turn around and uh look at the camera and say peace of the lord be with you amen and we continue with our gathering hymn we walk by faith Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Together, let us pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nourish our growth that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated to be seated for reading of the word. The first reading is from 1 Samuel 15th chapter. 
Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one who I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited him to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on his height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> the second reading is from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. So we are always confident, even though we know that where we're at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before judge, the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be, answer, may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on. But we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Rise to welcome the gospel in song. Oh, 
Holy Gospel according to Mark, the fourth chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come and he said he also said with what can we compare the kingdom of god and what parable will we use for it it is like a mustard seed which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth but when it is sown it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And I invite you to be seated. And uh, hopefully our, our kiddos are coming in they're coming in. Let's see. Okay. Um, let's, do we stall now? What do we do? <laughs> You'll go get them. Okay. So I have a pot of dirt here. Let's see. How do I, how do I, how do I stretch this out so they come in? Sing Rise and Shine. Okay, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. The Lord said to Noah, he's going to build an arky, arky, Lord said to Noah to build him an arky, arky, get it out of Indian barky barky children of the Lord. So rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Okay, good morning, good morning. We are so glad that you are here. Now, in our gospel story, we're talking about plants and we're talking about seeds and we're talking about how when we plant those seeds they become something very different okay so a seed is little but the next thing you know you have a really big plant now are we quite sure that how how all that happens well sort of because we've done studies but back in jesus time they really didn't know but what we're going to do this morning is we're going to plant some flowers in this here and then over the weeks, we're going to see if they grow. Okay. So what I have, uh, yeah, yeah, here we go. So what I have are these little things, and they're embedded with, with seeds. Okay. So see how it's kind of falling out. So we're going to dig a hole. Okay. Can you dig a hole here for me? Okay. Keep going. That's all right. That's why God made vacuum cleaners. We're good. Okay. All right. Okay. And Liam, would you like to put this in here? Sure, just go ahead and put it in there and just kind of like, yeah, push it down. There you go. There you go. All right. Okay. And Naomi, would you like to dig another hole? Okay. Okay. All right. And Asher, would you like to put that down in there? Yeah. If it is very dry. We're going to take care of that, right? Okay. Because Liam is going to water. There you go. So just pour it on both of them. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, kids, go ahead. There you go. It kind of floated, didn't it? Okay. And Naomi is going to cover it up. There you go. There you go. Perfect. You're a natural gardener. Did you learn from Grandma? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's take some of this little thing. Go over there. There we go. Okay. All right. 
well, we're going to put this here up on there, and we're going to put it in a sunny, sunny window. We're going to watch it over the weeks and see if it grows and what comes out of it, okay? So thank you so much for coming up. And this morning, what we learned was that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. It's teeny, tiny, tiny, and then it grows in, in a big, big bush so that um, things can take shelter in it like birds and get food from it, all sorts of cool things. And so we'll see what comes of these seeds, too. Okay? All righty. Thank you for coming up. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. All right. And now I'm... Where, where, is, where is Norm? Okay, Norm, um, I'll get the water up later, Okay. Norm's our property guy. So. <laughs> That's why God made vacuum cleaners, remember? Okay. So, our, our, uh, you know, we're, we've planted our plants. We're going to see what happens to them. We have embarked on our first summer or worship series called Under Construction, God at Work. And this is a six-week adventure that focuses on the first and second Samuel from the prophet Samuel through the kingship of David. And we're pairing this with the gospel of Mark. And all of this invites us to look at God's radical grace at work in some very unexpected ways. God is actively working among God's people. So let's see what's going on in Mark. Basically, how do you explain something that no one has ever seen? Something that is a place, but not really a place? That's something that's here, but not really here? We Lutherans love our paradoxes. So in Mark 4, 2, we hear that Jesus began to teach them many things in parable. Parables. Now, the word in and among itself is a fascinating study because para means alongside. So um, here, you know, in the teaching profession, we hear about paraprofessionals or paraprofessionals. So para means alongside. And bole comes from the word balin, which means to throw or cast. Okay, so Jesus is telling stories that he has cast alongside his teachings. It's somewhat, it's sort of like parallel lines. There's something there, a tension or even a communication of sorts that keeps them from ever intersecting. And yet, they are constant companion to each other. And that, that is their experience of the other, constant companion. It would be helpful probably to look at parables in the same way. Something that is held in tension, communicates, and is meant to be experienced is always there, Right? But even as close as they get, they don't intersect. They don't touch. So a way to experience parables just is to think of them as word pictures. Now, we live in a visual world, don't we? We take great pains to make sure that we have good visuals up on our screens, that our, our sanctuary um, has the appropriate liturgical arts in it. So we do live in a visual world. Jesus didn't always have that at his disposal. What Jesus lacked in visuals, he made up in word pictures. Pictures that initially might sound silly, especially to the first century ears, but reveal truth about Jesus, God, the kingdom of heaven, and even us. Parables give us a picture of how the kingdom of God operates. And their purpose is to overturn a common everyday assumption and to deconstruct the way we think about things. So we'll talk about this in a minute as we unpack these two parables before us. Now, parables can act like mirrors for us. Think about it. Now, mirrors are flat, aren't they? And we have to be alongside a mirror, some of us closer than others, okay? Parallel to that mirror to see in it. And we have to look in the mirror, but we can't intersect in the mirror, right? Only in fairy tales can you cross the line of reflection. So if I stand and I look at the mirror, sometimes I like what I see, okay? And sometimes I don't. A mirror will reflect back to you something about yourself. And likewise, a parable reflects things about God, ourselves, and it will affirm us, we might like what we see, or call us to repentance when we don't. 
Now, if we hang in there with it long enough, we may even experience a transformation of the heart and mind. God's work, radical grace at work. A parable can also act like a window or a pair of glasses. These things give us a new way to look at things that are right in front of us with a new clarity or, or in a new light. And it can also frustrate those of us who think we know everything, how everything should go or should be or what have you. So putting it all together, parables are word pictures that cast along a teaching that reflect a new way, a new truth about how we are experiencing God, Jesus, the kingdom. And it gives us a new clarity about that truth and experience. So we hear the kingdom of God is like a man who scatters seed on the ground. And night and day, whether he's asleep or away, the seed sprouts and grows, but the man doesn't know how it happens. Now, it really sounds as if the guy is just throwing seeds all over the place, and he's not checking out the soil. He's not saying to himself, if I, I should plant here, not there. And, you know, but he's doing this, and, and all of a sudden, bada bing, there's a plant. Now, that may have sounded silly to the first century agrarian people. You just don't throw out seeds. Seed is a precious commodity. And this would be too extravagant to just throw out seed without even looking where it's going. Okay. These were not extravagant people. They couldn't be. And to leave the seed alone, to go about his business, no weeding, no cultivating, no watering, no, even covering it up like we did with our plants. And yet, a plant appears. And the man doesn't know how it happens. So put this parable alongside of our lives. The kingdom of God is extravagant. Absolutely extravagant. It's going to happen regardless of what we do or what we don't do to grow it. Nothing is going to stop it. This God of, har of the harvest, this God is extravagant. So turn and look. Okay, look in the mirror. What is the reflection for our lives? What is God revealing to us about ourselves? What is God affirming? What is God calling us to repent? The truth is that the kingdom of God, the power of the Almighty can be hidden in the world and can be hidden in us as well. And it will be fruitful whether we understand how it works or not. But do we need to look closer? Do we need to look through a different window? Perhaps remind us about the how of the growth of the kingdom. Doesn't matter so much, but asking ourselves, is there something that we're doing to hinder the growth of the kingdom? Is there something that is standing in the way of us fully experiencing the mission that God has invited us to be a part of, the mission that we get to do, not that we have to do, that we get to do. And where do we need to wait in faith? Well, what about that mustard seed? The power of God is like a mustard seed. At this point, the first century ears are probably going, huh? This is where they might have thought, this is silly. Nobody intentionally plants mustard. It's weed. Mustard was considered a pungent, pesky, and dangerous plant. It was forbidden to be intentionally planted, and it was considered unclean and unsafe. Now, when you think of mustard plants, they're not like the ones that we have today are not like the ones in the Bible. Our mustard plants are closer to cabbage or radishes than trees, and they grow in fields. Okay? Jesus was talking about what he saw. Large evergreen shrubs or small trees known as the toothbrush tree. And it did exactly what its name did. Toothbrush, an ancient plant native to Middle East, Africa, and India. And the NIH website provides a long list of folk uses for the tree. Oral hygiene, food, cosmetics, fuel, medicine. The leaves and fruits were consumed as green vegetables or in salads. The resin can be used in varnish. Leaves and young twigs are useful as a nutrient for several animals, including cows, camels, goats, and sheep. 
to enhance cow lactation and increase the general body weight of animals. Honey from the toothbrush tree has a medicinal value and its flowers are a good source for honey bee nectar. So the kingdom of God, the power is pungent. It takes over. It attracts people who just might be undesirable to us and they will find shelter in it and they will find healing and they will find care and they will find food. The truth is the kingdom, the power of God can overwhelm us. We can't control it. It's definitely not safe and it will come to overturn, deconstruct and reconstruct and frustrate us and it'll also provide us with shelter and food. And all of this tracks, doesn't it? God frequently chooses the weak, the common, the unimpressive folk that from human perspective to be his servants. Samuel found it so difficult to anoint David as king after Saul because David was just a kid. And the shepherd boy looked like anything but a king. king. But the problem was Saul, who had been anointed as the first king, turned out to be a massive failure. Power went to his head. He stopped listening to God. He made choices that were questionable. And he did things like go to mediums to find out the future instead of relying on God. In comparison... David ruled with great success. We read a passage from 2 Corinthians this morning. Paul's criti critics in the church at Corinth, Corinth were judgmental of his preaching skills. It was said that he could not. Tradition teaches us that he wasn't really a good-looking person either. He had a chronic illness. He talks about it has a goad in his side that hindered him physically. We're not quite sure what exactly it was. Yet, second only to Jesus, Paul became the dominant figure in the New Testament because he accomplished so much church planting within the Gentile world. And look at the New Testament and how much of it. Seven books are attributed to him for sure, for sure. And there are several others that are as well. Now, turning back to Messiah, Eve, turning back to Isaiah, even the Messiah was described as one whose outward appearance would not attract people to him. So all of this is to say we see the outside of people. God sees the inside. We see the body. God sees the heart. And by not looking through the eyes of God, the eyes of Jesus, we will miss what is right there before us. And we may see only failure. But is it? Is it? Because God very well may be seeing success right here in this congregation, right here in all the things that we are able to do and all the things that we get to do and all the people that we feed. We're going to have to add that up. How many, chill, how many meals did we send out Friday bags? Well over a thousand. How many people do we feed each of our um, uh, fifth, sat fifth Saturdays? We've been averaging between 75 and 100. And then there are so many others. Look at those children. They're going to get socks and toothpaste and get them ready for school as we work with other congregations and other denominations and other faiths to bring this. So while we may focus on our struggle, I invite you to, to focus on what we do have here. We are an amazing and generous congregation. Keep that in your heart because God sees and we are invited to see as God sees. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, Mighty to Save.
Together, let us confess our faith, the faith that makes us one by using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Nourish your faithful people through gifts of word and worship. Guide the church in listening to and interpreting your message of grace for this time and place in history. In your wisdom, lead us in expanding the reach of your love. Merciful God. Nature sings your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Sustain the holy rhythms of creation. Days and seasons, hibernation and activity, phases of the moons and tides of the sea, let these patterns assure us of your constancy. Merciful God, you raise the lowly and humble, those in high regard. Raise up all those who are victims of marginalization, discrimination, and hate. As we anticipate Juneteenth, Juneteenth, Banish white supremacy and bigotry from the hearts of your people and remove the inclination toward anger and violence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Tend to all who journey by faith and who wait with patience for the fulfillment of your healing promises. Especially this day, we remember Betsy Shinstock, Tom Bailey, David Howe, Terry Cuckcuck, Carol Reddick, Bill Pasola, Andy Anderson, Ron Anderson, Arlene Rosheim, Wally Rosheim, and those that we name before you now. Grant perseverance to people doing physical and occupational therapy, people living with mobility concerns, and people facing chronic pain. Merciful God. As you have loved us, so let us live one another. Let us love one another. Empower fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers, adoptive fathers, and chosen fathers to embody this gift of love for their children. Where these relationships are strained or broken, bring your comfort and peace. Merciful God. With gratitude, we remember the Emmanuel Nine martyrs who entered into the church triumphant on this day. The saints who are now at home with you plant seeds of their wisdom and witness in our hearts that we grow in faith until we join them in your heavenly dwelling. Merciful God, receive our, prayer. receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Again, it is wonderful to be in this place at this time with all of you. Uh, this past week, uh, there's several, two of us went to Power in the Spirit. That's that uh, once a year annual spiritual formation retreat uh, that focuses on, on um, older adults, or adults rather. And so our focus was Esther. And we learned a whole bunch of things about Esther. But one of the things that has really stuck with me, besides that verse that we all remember, for you were born for, or you were in this place, you were born for such a time as this, was how much courage she had and how bold she was and how much strength she had to put her life on the line and say, don't kill my people. As she approached the king, who didn't even invite her in, and she could have died just because of that. 
And so as we come on to this day, as we hear for our mission moment, I invite you to be courageous, to be bold, and to remember that God has put us in this time, in this place, for such a time as this. Amen. As Patty plays, uh, her God Created Heaven and Earth is the uh, name of her offertory this morning. QR code will come up on the screen. For those of you who are joining us online, we invite you into our ministry. And if you'd like to um, uh, support us monetarily, use the, use the QR code. Uh, it's also on the back of our bulletins, and we have our offering plate in the north. Amen. 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 Let us rise for the offertory response. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. 
Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to all his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come, I invite you to be seated. Communion today can be do done one of two ways. Uh, you can come here to the rail or you receive communion in your place. If you choose to come to the rail, I invite you to come up to the center aisle uh, and fill in the rail here. And then as you depart, deposit your used glasses in the reception bowls on either side as you return by the side aisle. <sighs> Come. For everyone born, there is a place at this table. For young, for woman and man, for young, for old, for just, unjust, for gay, for straight, for abused, abuser, for a rainbow of race. Everyone born, there is a place at this table. And when Christ says all, he means all. Amen. As we sing Lamb of God, for those receiving communion in your places, please prepare your communion.
for those receiving communion in their places. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. For those receiving communion in their places, the blood of Christ shed for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And we invite you to take part in a tradition we have here at RLC as we hold hands and sing our celebration hymn. So I invite you to hold hands as you feel comfortable or able. And I'm looking for my glasses so I can see the words. There we are. Uh, the words are on the screens. Receive the blessing. May the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon us now and forever. Amen. We continue with our sending hymn, The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve. peace. We are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.